Welcome back to the Living Well series that is being hosted here at the Yarra Valley Living Centre. And today I have with me Leela Rickard, who's a resident here and very, very active in many different areas. And I guess active is the way to describe her. So today she's going to speak about how to bring wellness into our daily life through movement and being aware of our body and our movement. So welcome, Lila. Thank you. Yeah. So you look pretty fit. How I do you stay fit? fit. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I wasn't always fit. Uh, and I've sort of learnt it as I went along. I've, I've heard a few key sentences that really touched me and changed my life actually and one of them is really simple is that the body wants to move and I always had this mm, disinterest dislike actually for cleaning <laughs> and for doing any sort of household work. Oh how unusual. <laughs> <laughs> and then I started realizing that actually it's no big deal because the body is moving and the body enjoys moving and it feels better and then I started noticing that the more I cleaned, the more energy I got. And so as instead of doing exercises, I always include a sort of exercise in my whatever I'm doing. So if I'm, you know, carrying something, instead of just carrying it close to me, I extend my arms because that, you know, gives a, a massage and an, um, training to the the arms and instead of just bending down to pick something I make sure that I bend with straight legs so I'm always conscious of what I'm doing and another statement that had a big impact on me uh, especially in terms of our spiritual life is that we're always trying to be more soul conscious you know more aware of the spiritual side of things and not the physical in, in fact we're always sort of trying to forget the body in a way. But I heard this statement that those who are really elevated in their soul conscious practice are those who are not body conscious, but are conscious of the body. Mm. And I really thought about that. And I understand that we have like three trillion cells all cooperating with my consciousness with me and all working towards my health, my well-being, my energy. And so it's my duty and responsibility and consciousness to give them what they need. You know, I was just in the supermarket and there was a picnic bar for a dollar. And I thought, mm, does my body really want that? Will it appreciate it? And I thought, no, it would just be giving it hard work. So I didn't, I wasn't tempted. It becomes really <laughs> easy in that way. You start to develop a relationship with the body um, in, a, in a similar way, just to kind of show you what I'm talking about. I never tell people my age um, because I do believe that cells respond to vision, to perception, to our attitude, to our intention. And I, honestly believe that if, if people see me as a certain way, if I were to tell them my age, they would adjust, I hope, their, their vision on me, but this would affect my cells. And also it's my own attitude about myself. I feel I'm young, healthy, and so accordingly I behave like that, probably uh, too much sometimes, but um, I like dancing, I like being active, I, I don't think twice about doing a headstand or uh, a handstand or something. Um, I probably should, but um, there's no should in this. The, the cells don't, don't listen to should, they listen to energy and intention and they want to support us. It's like having a whole army of, of help there and we need to see the body in that way. So this uh, place with all its activity for you is like a gym. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I've been making beds and vacuuming and doing laundry. And um, 
you know, it, it, the secret of this time we're living in now, I feel, is really contained in energy. That the energy we give out um, is contributing to the atmosphere. Um, so if I can be very positive in my approach to whatever I do, I'm affecting not only the atmosphere, but also it's a protection because out in the world nowadays, there's a lot of negative energy. There's a lot of stress and stress causes the system to shut down. You know, the responses to stress are fight or flight or freeze. And the impact of this on the cells is that they they go into um, survival, perhaps survival, survival? mode. Yes, mm. um, in the animal world. Yeah, I mean we're surrounded by kangaroos here. Yeah, and you know the car drives down, and some of them start panicking and and hopping off, but you know that in thirty seconds they're going to be calm again. Whereas human beings, when they carry stress. Uh, they don't calm down so mm. quickly or easily. And, I mean, actually doing something physical is a way to calm down. Because, is that your experience? Yes, because when, when, you, when you do something physical, um, dopamine is release, released. Mm. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter mm. which affects the neocortex. So uh, you do automatically feel better. Even mm. to just go and stand with your back in the sunshine can make you feel better. Mm. Um, but we have to really watch out for stress and doing something physical really helps. Mm. I think a, a real syndrome of today's age are people sitting at desks or sitting in front of the TV. And the more you do it, the less easy it is to, to change, to get up, to do something. But you're also doing the planning here. So I do see you sitting at the desk, accounting, all kinds of things at a desk. So what do you do about your body at the desk? Well, I don't sit for long. I sit for a while. Um, and luckily here we have these desks that raise. Mm. And when I was at a desk for long times, I would actually stand and mm. stand up and sort of move about a bit. Um, this is a secret I learned just a couple of years ago, actually, is to keep intercepting what I'm doing with an exercise mm. so you know and sometimes you have to really push yourself to break what you're doing mm. it's a little bit like traffic control mm. that we have you know where we stop and meditate every now yeah. and again it's the same thing just to stop if you're sitting and do some exercise anything simple just you know 14 push-ups if you can or squats or you know, whatever you feel your need, your body needs or where it's appropriate. It's not always appropriate to do exercises where we are. But, you know, just focusing on what the body is asking for. Yeah, and, and talking about that, you know, I understand that meditation is concentration and also relaxation. So when, often when we're at a desk, we're concentrated. And yes. so our relaxation gets lost. Yes. And often when we're relaxed, we can't concentrate. Yes. So meditation, sometimes we fall asleep because yes. we associate relaxation with sleep and we don't concentrate. So yes. how do you work with that balance of relaxation and concentration? Well, again, I mean, I'm not perfect in this by any means, but I'm much better than I was. Um, I do accounts as well and I get very absorbed in the accounts and when you get absorbed in something actually it's like tightening up a an elastic band you remember those little planes mm. that you know you tighten up the elastic band mm. and then you let it go and go Shh, like yes. this <laughs> so uh, the same thing can be when you just focus in too much for too long a period of time you've you've tightened up like an, an elastic band so um we have the experience over a long period of time of stopping and doing just a minute or five minutes of meditation. Um, but I would also say just stop and, and do an exercise. It doesn't matter what kind it is. And then the whole system, it's like the, the cells breathe, you know, because they're not all geared up. It's like an army, you know, they're, mm. they're all in coherence. Mm. And they're all waiting for directives from the mind. Mm. 
And if we ignore the body, um, the, the cells just, well, they start uh, going into a sort of um, sedentary system. Mm. They're just waiting for our instruction. You know, when you're excited about something, when you're excited about newness, you see how energetic you feel. Mm. And that is because the body is getting the signal, the emotional signal that comes behind the intellectual or mental signal of newness. The emotions come up and then the body starts becoming activated and it's rejuvenating mm. and they start um, sending signals around the body. Come on, it's active time. A sedentary lifestyle, on the other hand, where we become really lazy, uh, as I said before, it becomes much more difficult to do something. Mm. And it becomes much more difficult to find something new. And then we become a little bit weak and defeatist. Oh, I can't do that right now. Oh, it doesn't matter if I eat this chocolate biscuit. Oh, it doesn't matter if I lie in bed for another hour. You mm. know, and this starts to become the habit and it it takes a lot to break the habit, mm. a lot of determination. And, you know, a lot of people put emphasis or value, let me use that word value, on different activities. Like cleaning is sometimes seen as not as valuable as planning or managing or something. So, you know, um, I was just interested how you perceive these things. Because I remember Daddy Janky once saying, the former head of the organisation, when you're washing the dishes and someone comes to ask you a question, just looking at them, you should send them beyond. So such a beautiful state to be in, what we call karma yoga. Yeah. So what is karma yoga? That's probably a good question. Yeah. Well, yoga, as you know, is um, connection. It's the connection of the soul with whatever the yoga is. Mm. So uh, karma yoga is the connection of the soul in action with the action um, so when i'm doing something where is my mind and who am i thinking about what am i thinking about it's so easy for the mind to run away with whatever you're doing in a sense if you're at a computer the mind does tend to be busy it's a bit like a, a horse you know in, in a in a bag of food you know it's got something to chew on but when you're when you're in action uh, the mind is very free to have all kinds of wasteful thoughts. And this is not karma yoga, this is just action. Mm. And you may find, if according to your thoughts, you can be doing the same action, but the energy will run out. It'll be like a leakage in the bucket mm. because you're thinking of either someone else, it's usually someone else or a conversation you've had, or what you're going to do in the future. Or even what you want to be doing. Because yes. I notice if I am ironing and I want to or I feel I need to be doing something else, I don't enjoy it. I just want to get it finished. Yes. But if I'm ironing and I'm ironing, that's all I'm doing, I feel so good. It's so peaceful. I actually yes. enjoy it. Yes. So I've just noticed that difference yes. in the mind. And what will happen is if you're in a hurry and you're ironing in a hurry, you're bound to make a mistake, yeah. you know, or miss something or, you know. Yeah, and, and definitely not enjoy it because yes. you're thinking what you would prefer to be doing yes. rather than just being. Yes. And this is another point about the body and the cells of the body is that the, the body stores memory from the past. So we're always in a sense, acting according to what I've done in the past. Mm. And this is why newness is also so important and why um, when I'm in action, the tendency or temptation to think about the past is quite strong also mm. because it's all there in the body. Mm, so I, need, I, see. I really mm. need to focus on what newness there is and where I, um, how I want to enhance my life or in in our cases, Raj Yogis, in spiritual thoughts mm. or in divine thoughts, even better still, so that while my hands are doing the work, my mind is actually being quite productive in another way. Mm. 
and we call it churning knowledge yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. even if it's repetitive but if the thoughts are elevated they carry a vibration with mm. them which again is affecting the cells which is again affecting the energy that i do things with mm. have you ever experienced pain like whether it's chronic or mm. you know just a sudden situation that's passed what's your experience been with the body and pain well uh, regrettably over the last few years i've been getting migraines not recently i'm happy to say but um i don't know whether they're caused by electromagnetic frequency or eating too much chocolate there's a lot of theories about it but nonetheless and they would last for three days mm. and it would reach a, pa a, s a painful stage where i would take a tablet and then I tried not to take a tablet and uh, just go through it um, and see, you know. And there's a lot of different theories on it. Um, but I, I felt that one thing I had heard that is if you push through it, mm. it goes faster. So pushing through it means actually trying to do something and forget about it rather mm. than rather than going into the pain because this is what it means to be a master of oneself is that something might be going on but to go beyond it is a is a new stage and to go beyond it uh, requires a lot of um, strangely enough not attention but lack of attention to think <laughs> of other things to to put other things in the mind and uh, and then I do believe they they pass actually I, re I remember having um, homeopathic remedy once and um, the doctor didn't tell me that if you get a, a headache or something and I in those days I wasn't so strict about not taking tablets and the headache came up and I took a tablet and he said, did you get a headache or something? I said, yes. He said, did you take anything for it? I said, yes, I took a tablet. And he went, oh, he said, now you'll get more headaches. He said, you missed your chance. <laughs> you, you shouldn't have taken anything. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and he said, that was it coming to say goodbye. Now mm. you suppressed it, he said. Mm. Because when we take painkillers or whatever, we suppress things. Mm. So, it, you know, I'm not saying that you shouldn't take them and be in a lot of pain if it's unbearable. But I have been trying to get over it so that it doesn't come back. And uh, mm. well, so far it's been a while now, I can honestly say. Now that's so, a very good point because if you take a painkiller, you don't really mind, you know, like you just let it come back, take another painkiller, yeah. but you're not getting to the root. So I can, what right. I'm hearing is that you are inquiring where it's coming from and what's yes. the root of it and how do I, you know, how do I deal with it really, yes. rather than just put yes. it aside? Yes. Mm -hmm. And people talk about, there are some people who have a high tolerance for pain and some mm. who have a low tolerance. I believe I have a high tolerance for pain. Mm. And um, to me, it's, it's such a training to see the separation between soul and body and that's the whole point of karma yoga mm. also is that we become more and more aware of the separation between i the soul and the driver behind the mm. body performing the action mm. um, and to you know disengage from this identity that i am a body and this is all difficult no the body mm. is actually happy to do the work of the the soul mm. the driver and then there's another aspect to karma yoga, meaning you can even take your thoughts to the divine and feel that you're just, your body's an instrument and even you, the soul, are not the driver. There's another driver. What's, oh, what's that experience? That's another level again. Yeah. <laughs> In India, they call it Karan Karavan Har, which is um, the one who performs and works through others. And uh, it's a very subtle energy, but it's a very high energy. I, I do believe there are sort of gradients of energy mm. and that in yoga, 
you know, our aim is to sort of tune into those higher frequencies and higher vibrations. Mm -hmm. And when you do, now because everything is intermingled, mm. our words carry vibrations. You know, a word like peace carries a vibration of peace and love. And, mm. you know, each, so not only the words, but the thoughts of those words carry with them mm. vibrations. So when we're tuning into the highest vibration, the divine vibration, mm. we're lifting our own frequencies. But then also, then the magic starts to happen. <laughs> you know, we, um, we might find we're doing something and have an inspiration, or someone may come along and help you. Uh, and you have a good connection uh, it's like then some we we move to another level but that requires a very deep level of faith and sometimes you feel how did I do so much in such a short time it's a really like how did that happen it just happened yes yes <laughs> I was doing laundry yesterday and it was so good to see all those folded sheets and pillowcases and actually I really enjoyed it I have oh, to say oh wonderful <laughs> it was yeah. so fresh and you know, that mm, clean. At first cleanliness I thought, is another vibration, oh, another yes. energy. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, at first I thought, these sheets are too big. I need, I wonder if someone will come along and help me fold them, you know. And I thought, no, no, no I can do this. I'll find the way to do it, you know. Yeah, yeah. So it always becomes a challenge. Mm. It becomes a way. So how, what's the easiest and best way to to uh, fold, fold these sheets, sheet. you know. Mm. And then afterwards, the, the sense also that, a lot of people are going to benefit from these lovely yeah. white clean sheets. You know. That's also another ad added thing, isn't it? That when you're doing all this action here, it's a selfless action because you're a volunteer. You're doing it for others. So there's yeah. such a blessing in that, isn't there? Mm. That's yeah. true. Lovely. Yes. Good. So let's let. Can you take us beyond the body in some meditation? I'd love to. Yeah. Good. Okay, for how long? Oh, a few minutes. Okay. Up to five. So I feel that I am a being of energy. And if I want to sit in the very center of this energy, to feel where I am in this body, sort of pull my awareness in from all around me. Where am I in the center of my being? I know I have arrived here when I experience peace and lightness. And then I see how fortunate I am to have this physical body that serves me so well, so constantly. Always moving towards my well-being, my good health, and to be able to carry out actions that serve me and serve others and bring happiness. But this happens best when I experience myself separate to the body and yet in relationship with it. I the real me actually live in another dimension of energy, 
consciousness, the spiritual dimension, the dimension of thought, and intention. When I come to this place of silence, it's as if I punctuate my life. I come to a stop and rest. And the silence heals. Heals my mind. And thus my body. It allows me to become energized. As I tune into higher frequencies, the frequency of love. Gratitude. The more I appreciate my surroundings and all that is good around me in this wonderful life, the more wonder comes, the more beauty. And this is the magic. The magic that comes simply from knowing who am I? a peaceful being. Shanti. You certainly did go beyond. <laughs> so just coming back to thank you. And I think it's been so practical and uh, given us very good tips how to really do that workout in everything that we're doing, both mentally and physically, and make the most of every moment of our life. Mm. Mm. Otherwise, sometimes we feel we're wasting time when we're doing a lot of physical things, but not at all. Not so at all. thank you so much. <laughs> it's been great. You're welcome.